ERP Next tutorial for beginners. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you about ERP Next and how you can use it. So let's get into it. So you might have already guessed, but ERP stands for Enterprise Resource planning right and next is an erp software so in this video i'll show you how you can do this basically it contains every tool that you would need so over here on the left hand side you got accounting sales crm stock projects manufacturing point of sale quality everything right and a lot of companies use it and they use it to manage all of their companies and their resources and erp next is one of the up and coming ones and it's pretty cool you can go ahead and start your free trial it's not free but you can go ahead and get started with the free trial and sign up and you can sign up with your google account or your email and you should be good to go i'm going to continue with google and then click on create account and now let's set up your site so here just add in your site this is going to be a free domain you can add your own domain later i'll show you how you can do that as well but for now we're just simply going to go ahead and say this is a demo site and then click on create site and then just simply go ahead and set up your language your country time zone and currency and also you can even allow sending usage data i'm not going to do that and allow recording my first session no i'm not going to do that either click on next on next and now it's going to be your company name your company abbreviation your chart of accounts you can go with standard with number you can view your account over here financial year over here you can even generate demo data i'm going to do that as well so that you can see what it is because if we go with just a blank everything's going to look blank we're not going to be able to see anything so for now i'm going to generate a demo data as well and also add in the company name as well and yeah click on complete setup and now it's going to go ahead and do everything and so give it a couple of seconds and we should be good to go all right so now that it's loaded up this is how it looks like so here you can begin by adding a item creating a customer creating your first sale invoice right down below you've got your shortcuts where you have items customer suppliers invoices leaders leaderboard you got reports and masters data and import and settings are going to be over there on the left hand side you can see you've got your accountings buying selling stocks manufacturing quality all those other options are available over here you can get a website a crm tools uh, projects integrations and other options as well so you can see everything is available over here now let's go ahead and create an item so click on this button or click on create an item or create a new item we can add the item code over here item group and if it falls into one of these options and default unit uh nos and main stock or is a fixed after so you could type whatever code you want it'll basically be a special or unique identification code over here then you have item groups and then you have an os which is number of sales this is the default measurement of unit if it's maintained stocks you can go with this one if it's fixed in asset you can select a category and create that but i think for now we should be good to go and yeah that's how you can create it right now it's over here but let's say it wasn't here then how would you create an item over here on the left hand side you can see you have all these different options right and we'll go over them in a sec but you'll need to come over here click on stock it's going to open up the whole section you can see this is the demo data that i was telling you about and then down below in items and catalogs you've got items you click on items and it'll take you here where you can see all of your items so you've got sneakers and right now it's enabled you've got the item group the id and everything else and if you open it up or click on an item this is how it would look like you would have to upload your image of the product you've got the details where you've got item name item group default measure number of stocks uh, valuation rate and other options then you have a dashboard you can see how much this product has been selling in which date it was created how many are left how they are purchasing whether or not uh they're performing well so you get everything over here which is pretty cool then you have inventory you have also accounting purchasing sales tax quality manufacture all of those are going to be available over here so it's pretty cool it has everything and same thing if we go back with other options as well and again you can just simply click on add item add the item code item group and you should be good to go so let's say let's create one well it's on we already have a bunch of other ones so uh, let me see what i can do so we got laptops t-shirts smartphones camera headphones i don't know what i should add over here i'll, I'll just add whatever one two six item group is going to be let's say it's a product and click on save right now we have a new one which is one two six eight so now we can go ahead and change the name add the image and 
select dashboard inventory and everything basically add all of the details that we just went over you know shelf life in days uh we'll just say it's you know doesn't have any shelf life so we'll leave that zero end of life 2099 that's that's kind of neat and accounting purchasing sales tax quality manufacturing and everything so yeah this is okay valuation rate over here you can add whatever you want overall billing allowance and percentage you can maintain the stocks or allow alternative but i think this is okay got your unit of measurement description over there and then you can click on save it is now saved and now created so there you go now you know how to create an item you also have a bunch of other options in stocks as well so as you can see right here down below uh you've got your master support settings serial batch warehouses there's just endless and so many options to go over and i don't think i can fit every single one of those items within this video but i would like to go over you know just the basics of it so i already showed you how you can create a stocks and how you can add items and create uh stock groups and stuff like that coming back over here this is going to be your home then you have your accounting section over here and underneath accounting you've got your payables and receivables the this is where you can see all of your outgoing bills total incoming bills and a total income payment and a total outgoing payment as well so we have a 65k of bills right so you can see right here income and then we have expenses over here and then we have a net profit of 109 which is pretty cool but you can see right here all of the options are going to be over here you've got your payment entry journal entry and yeah everything else and you also have your financial reports over here this is the buying section where you can go ahead and select buying from specific vendors buying orders you know all of them are going to be available over here this is the selling section where you can see all of your sales and how much stocks you've got how many sale orders you have and then you have your stocks we've already gone over that and then you have your assets where you can go ahead and set up assets so here you can see uh, you've got define asset category, create an asset item, purchase an asset. And down below again, you've got your other shortcuts where you can see all of them. You've got your manufacturing and projects and other options as well. Now, one of the cool things about this one is that they also give you the ability to create a website as well. So if you come over here, you can create a website. And here is the introduction to a website. This is like a simple little option. Then you have a create blogger, add blog category, enable website tracking and everything. And here is your blog post. So if we click Look over here you can see currently we have nothing we can create a blog post over here then you have your blogger uh, web page set up everything so down below you also have website themes as well over here you can create or add a website theme as well so over here this is the blogger one right let's go ahead and click on show blogger list and this is the blogger section and here we can add a blogger this is going to be the website name basically we have the short name will be used in the url full name users bio and then you can add a attachment as an avatar this is going to be your new blogger that's going to be it and then here we'll just add the user which is going to be ourselves and click on save so this is the blogger this guy is going to be responsible for creating blogs and stuff like that not actual website i, I miswrote that but yeah there you go and this is the introduction then you can add a blog category and create or add logs as well like here you've got your blog post you've got a blog blogger right here and this is the web page right here so create a web page if you want you can click on this button then here you've got your title the root dynamic root uh, whatever option you want and you've got your style scripts and settings as well again way too many things to go over but yeah, you can create a decent blogging type website that is related to your business. You also get a CRM section over here where you can see or manage all of your CRM section and all of your customer relations. And so, yeah, pretty simple. Uh, these were all the information you need to know about ERP Next. And there you have it. So again, this was the free trial. Now, if you wanted to see how much it would cost, here is the pricing section right here. So they've got basically two options. You've got for small businesses and for mid to large enterprises. For small businesses, it's going to be $5 per month, all right? You're going to start you with a 0.5 hour CPU time, two gig, almost 0.2 gigabytes database, two gigabytes of storage. You can, you can scale up to $100 per month for the higher computing. So that's a separate price. They're going to give you the bare minimum for $5, and then you can go ahead and increase the computing power and storage to your needs. Then you can pay the extra price for that. Here you've got all of your features and the differences that 
both of them have but yeah the maximum it goes up to 200 dollars per month which is going to be for the mid to large size this is going to give you two vcpus and four gigabytes of ram which you can also scale higher for more uh computing power and that's going to be a separate charge as well so there you go these were everything you needed to know for erp next i tried to give or cram everything in as much as i could possibly could within this video but again way too many things to go over but for now there you have it thank you for watching and until next time take care and goodbye